The Untold History of Women in Tai Chi, Part 3. Women and Qigong. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I thought this was about women and Tai Chi. What is Qigong? First of all, misconception. The Qi in Qigong is not the same as the Ji in Tai Chi. Two different things, but most people pronounce Tai Chi as Tai Chi, so it gets confusing. Qigong is the mother of Tai Chi. Perhaps I will cover the father of Tai Chi in another video. Qigong is a collection of exercises, usually non-sequential, and exercises have been around forever. Imitating nature is one of the oldest forms of Qigong, with people moving around a fire, imitating cranes, tigers, bears, monkeys, and dragons, getting their education, entertainment, and exercise all at the same time. Gong means to work at attaining a high level of expertise, as in Gong Fu. Did you know you could be a Kung Fu master of tea or gardening? Qi. The meanings of what Qi is run the gamut, from the steam escaping a tea kettle, to breathing, to the life force we have in our bodies. Let's settle on Qigong as breath exercises and the cultivation of energy. Qigong exercises became part of traditional Chinese medicine along with nutrition, herbal medicines, acupuncture, and acupressure. Since Qigong involves healing and caregiving, in ancient China women were more readily involved in traditional Chinese medicine than martial arts. But over time it became more difficult in certain areas of medicine and women had to deal with the same patriarchal issues and barriers that other women faced in learning the martial arts or taking up a profession in a male-dominated society. But again there were exceptions and exceptional women. On a personal note, I have learned Tai Chi from women, but most of my teachers have been men. I have learned Qigong from men, but most of my teachers have been women. No judgment, just reflection. To further explore this subject, I will have some recommendations in the notes below. How did Tai Chi get to America and the rest of the world? It seems obvious that Tai Chi was wrought over with the immigration from China to America, but that was not always an easy undertaking. America had started trade with China a year after it won its independence in 1784. In the 1820s, the U.S. was shipping tons of goods to China, including, ironically, more than 750,000 pounds of ginseng. Trade flourished, but there was little immigration to the U.S. until 1848 when gold was discovered in California and it attracted worldwide attention and immigration. In 1862, President Lincoln described relations with China as favorable. In 1868, a treaty was signed allowing immigration. But by 1975, Congress passed the Page Act restricting immigration and barring Chinese coolie labors. Seven years later, in 1882, the first U.S. law preventing a specific immigrant group based on race was passed. The Chinese Exclusion Act barred Chinese except merchants and their families from coming to America. The Chinese became the first undocumented immigrants to the U.S. This act wasn't repealed until 1943. Many Chinese immigrants were met with racism and or a fear of them taking over American jobs. The Chinese history and culture brought over from China, including martial arts such as Tai Chi, was shared within families with tradition and lineage in mind and was still for the most part passed down from father to son. Tai Chi gets promoted in the U.S., but who promoted what and when? A man named Chen Man Ching is credited with promoting Tai Chi in the West. As a poet, artist, and calligrapher, he came to New York in 1968, where he also taught and demonstrated Tai Chi forms at the United Nations. He is also credited with creating the Yang 37 short form. Most people have heard his name, 
or recognize him as a catalyst for Tai Chi. But what most people don't know is that there were two women who preceded him, one in America and one in Norway. And one was at, of all places, the United Nations. In 1961, Sophia Delsa was teaching the UN Secretariat staff moves like move the tiger, push the mountain, and sit without a chair. Let's go back to 1949, when two women, completely independent and without knowledge of each other, visited China and were compelled to learn Tai Chi after being exposed to it. Gertie Geddes, a Norwegian dancer, said this, As I watched, I had a sensation of hot and cold streaming up and down my spine, and I remember thinking, this is what I have been looking for all of my life. Gertie went back to Norway, bringing Tai Chi with her. Sophia Delza, also a dancer and choreographer, taught Chinese dancers modern dance. And when she returned to the U.S., she returned the favor by teaching Tai Chi to Americans. Gertie's and Sophia's story went beyond overcoming the boundaries of race and gender, and it's interesting to note how little ink and credit they get in the history of Tai Chi coming to the West. Also, ironically, in 1949, the People's Republic of China took power, which meant, among other things, a discouraging of many of the old ways, disparaging Jigong, Tai Chi, and traditional Chinese medicine. We don't know how much of an impact Sophia had on Tai Chi coming to America. Her fame was brief, but extensive. A newspaper archive search reveals that in the early 1960s, there were over 500 newspaper articles about Sophia and Tai Chi in North America, from Hawaii to New York, from Montreal, Canada to Texas, from California to Wisconsin, and just about every place in between. Cheng Man Chin had less articles but had a huge impact in terms of schools that were started up in his name and lineage. Gerda has been featured in Europe. She published a book in 1991 titled Looking for the Golden Needle, and in 2008 Frank Woods wrote a book on her life titled Dancer in the Light. Currently, it is estimated that over 250 million people practice Tai Chi worldwide and 2.5 million in the U.S. Since women outnumber men in the world population, and since women live longer on average than men, and since more and more seniors are taking Tai Chi, it follows that there are more women practicing Tai Chi than men, and the numbers will continue to grow in favor of women. So Tai Chi, which was once male-dominated, has now flipped in terms of women participants. 